All right, so we're recording. Um, hi, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to our meeting. Um, and our meeting, let me see, I have a little spiel of Kim. But, oh. Okay, let's see. So I will read the spiel. Oh, Kim is. Oh, yeah. login, but it just says I'll read it. So it yeah. says no pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Like who wish to access the meeting may do or, um, via Zoom. No in person attendance of members of the public participation in any hearing. No, we don't have a public hearing. Okay. Great. Of members present. Um, great. So thanks. Uh, so the meeting is called to order. First order of business is a, a public comment. I didn't see if there are public members of the public here. Our, our, um, we, our attendee in the attendee room. Has There's one. Okay. And they're also, if they'd like, they are, we could let them join the meeting. His hands up. You want to let him, let him join the meeting or you want me to let, he let can, him talk? He, you can let him join the meeting because then he's not just a voice out there. All right, there he is. Hi. Um, tell us who you are, your address, and make your comments. Hi, thanks for letting me join. My name is Gordon Green. I live at the corner of uh, Cowles Road and Montague Road in North Amherst. And I had a question I wanted to ask you all. Um, and that is that. Um, the Delta Sands uh, quarry or whatever it is, has rooted, rooted, rooted its trucks around this corner. And uh, it's a lot of, lot of truck, 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 truck traffic now. And they use their engine brakes, which are quite loud and disruptive. And I know um, I, I talked to them about it and Cinda Jones, I guess, has been in touch with them too, because um, it, it's, it's pretty disruptive to the neighborhood. And I was, um, I, they, they said, oh, we'll tell them all to, to not to use their engine brakes, but most of them don't. And they said they'd reroute them down through um, Pine Street or Meadow Street, whatever that is, next intersection down. Um, but the, I think it's, it's, they don't seem to like to do that. The actual trucks keep coming by this corner. So I was wondering, I noticed that in Sunderland, they actually have a sign by the pit there that says trucks, do not use engine brakes, you know, reminding them not to use their engine brakes. And I was wondering if you might enlighten me as to what the process might be for getting such a sign or anything like that. Is that within your bailiwick? No. <laughs> I'm not sure that it is, but okay. I mean, we've never dealt with anything like that before. Maybe Guilford or one of our town um, administrators might no better no, it, it's question in, the, in Sunderland. Like, is it actually? Are, I mean, I, I think it's they're a, driven it, by their it, it, it's, are not they, a, it's not a town of Sunderland sign. I'm sorry, Bernie, you got cut off. What was that? That's that's not a town of Sunderland. That's sign. what I was going to say. Yeah. And Jake, oh. Jake breaks. Jake breaks are um, a royal pain. Um, it, it, in theory, they don't have to make a loud noise if they're well maintained. In practice, it seems like nobody bothers to maintain them. Yeah, the sign looked very official, but I guess I, who would have put it there just to, you know, is, is it, it, it's the same kind of sign as like a stop sign. It's very kind of enameled, you know, thing. But it, it's on 116, right? No, it's on, um, it's on the little, I can show you, it's, it's, it's on the little road that goes up, oh, what is it? It's not Hubbard Road. Yeah, I know which road you mean. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Hubbard Go off of, the, the, the town, well, the town manager can recommend, and I, to the this 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 one's a little bit different because you have to have enforcement as well so it actually does have to go through the town council to make it a, make a make a ruling so that the police can enforce it otherwise you're just putting a sign up and the, someone uses the jake break the police can't say anything about it well i just thought a reminder i don't know about enforcement but so actually in any case i should go with the town manager yes and there's been there's been a there's been another one if i remember correctly right chris the the Cushman 
Cushman Corner people have asked for a no Jake, no engine brake sign as well. Oh, okay. So. <clears throat> And so I guess if he is interested in trying to do something, should he reach out to his counselor or to the town manager? Go for what would you recommend? You can always do both. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. I'll give I it a shot. I would do both. Okay. We do we do have a noise bylaw. I'm not sure. Yeah, I was gonna say the I'm not sure that um it's broad enough to cover um uh, the the engine brakes. But um, half the time that I've had to deal with this, it's been it's been dealt with informally. Okay. Um, you know, you, you solicit the cooperation of the the the, uh, <clears throat> the company that owns the pit and um, uh, get them to post a sign and get them to talk to the drivers. And, okay. um, yeah, I've talked to them a few times. Maybe the, if, yeah. if some of the town were involved, it would be okay. Well, and well, I guess have you just talked to the drivers or just to the actual just a lot of drivers? A lot of different... No, but I'm saying you may want to talk to people on site too. Oh, like sort of higher there. up than the drivers. No, no, I'm talking to the their dispatcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, she sure. says she's telling them all not to use their. Oh. Uh, you, you, I, I think Gil Gilbert's correct. I mean, it would okay. probably take the. Um, the chief of police might have an idea as well, um, you know, as to how to how to quiet the situation down. Okay, but I, I think that the, uh, um, the the keepers of the road, the official keepers of the roadway, are the town council. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much, everybody. Good luck with your meeting. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> All right. So um, the. I assume there's no other public comment. So um, our next agenda item is approval of the meetings. Of the meeting. And um, we have- Yeah, Amber have... sent those out this afternoon. Right, the, it's just the April 28th meeting. So, and now who are we? I know we're missing, um, we're missing four of us. Marcus. Mark, Marcus is here. Oh no, he's here. Sorry, just haven't said anything, Marcus, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> been dealing with kids yeah yeah i was just who uh, that's what i was bus driver he joined yeah well he said he's day. away and i know bruce isn't available either so i guess that's all of us then oh right we're a committee of seven not a committee of nine okay mm -hmm. so um i need to approve a minute Great. And second? Second. Great. Thank you. So the um, minutes have been approved from the April 28th meeting. Um, and our next order of business is an update on the um, from Christine and Tracy about the safe routes to school. Yeah. Um, so I can start. Um, but before I do, I, I just want to mention um, that I have to run around like 6.15 and but I'll come right back. It takes like a couple minutes. My 17 year old doesn't have a license yet and I wish he would get one. <laughs> 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 um, so if I'm missing or I'm ex extra quiet for a few minutes, that's why. Got it. All right. Um, so Safe Roots to School. Um, so actually Christy and I met about Safe Roots to School stuff yesterday. At one of our earlier meetings, um, we had been in touch with Walk Boston. And the person who's the chair of the board of trustees for down Springfield and does a lot of walking and biking advocacy in Springfield and Western Mass, and also does some walk audits and things. Um, so she met with us yesterday and we did a walk of wild, the Wildwood School um, because when the attack had originally done its um, audits previously before I was on the TAC, I think we did those in 2018 or 19, um, that we, it had, there had been one for Fort River area and one for Crocker Farm, but there had not been one for Wildwood. Um, so we thought it would be beneficial, especially because already. So Christine is in the process of writing up that. And um, one thing I really like about the ones that Walk Boston has done and um, 
the school coordinator also works on some walk audits around schools is that they always include a lot of pictures and um, one thing i noted from our ones we've done previously is they're just narrative but you know pictures are just so valuable to show the other thing that i'm familiar with and then christine can fill in the pieces that i'm less familiar with is that a few weeks ago after our last meeting um so christine myself and the um, walk boston this region i mean i'm sorry the safe reach to school coordinator for the mass dot safe reach to school program her for the western mat for western mass her name is uh, lucy friedman bell and she is that right yeah and she um she actually covers all four western counties which is a big area and so she's actually spends even though she lives in the boston area she spends a lot of time driving to western mass um and so she, the three of us met with deb westmoreland from the superintendent's office to just talk about the idea of the Amherst schools getting more involved with the Safe Routes to School program. And uh, Deb Westmoreland was pretty interested and receptive to that. After our meeting, there was a team, uh, district leadership meeting that she was attending, which includes the principals and assistant principals. And she brought the idea of Safe Routes to School and having the schools be more involved it was a pretty positive reception. Um, they are looking at launching something next year. And um, and she also, in the superintendent's newsletter, they she put together a quick survey about, you know, would parents be interested or what would what are their main concerns and you know, how old are their kids out? Just some big she put it in after the first week it was in the newsletter. There's a superintendent's newsletter that comes out weekly. Um, it had over 100 responses, which is great. And then she was putting it in the newsletter again, and I haven't gotten an update from her since then. But to have that level of response is excellent. And they were looking to have a point person at each of the schools. One of the Safe Reach School program has been K to eight, and now it is also being expanded to include the high school, though, of course, it looks pretty different for elementary school versus middle school, high school. One thing we talked about with her is just, you know, that through the middle school and high school student groups. You know, there's some groups related to like climate change and environment. Aside from just the safety issues of related to, you know, having safe walking and safe biking to school, but just think about it from an environmental perspective and that might be a way to get some students more motivated. Um, but Christine, do you wanna fill in the rest of what you've been up to? Um, yeah, so I, um, uh, we left the meeting. So I think Debbie now, um, Debbie Westmoreland wants to convene, um, the actual person who's going to run the project at each of the schools. Um, and so she's waiting for the principals to kind of circle back with who that's going to be. Um, and then that group will convene, um, I agreed to contact the police department, which is which was our idea for um, who could actually run the educational curriculum at the schools. So I ended up speaking with um, um, Debbie. Spoke with uh, Captain Young. Captain Young actually emailed me a couple times that went to my spam folder. I feel bad. I, I just discovered that this afternoon. Um, but then um, Officer Laramie. Um, who does the community outreach, this kind of is in his um, kind of jurisdiction. So um, if it's not him, they're gonna try to find somebody from the bike unit who would be running some kind of um, bike pedestrian safety programming um, starting in the fall. And then um, I think that's really it for now and gauging interest and level of and feedback and stuff and, and how many people participate then I think everybody's kind of ready to amp up from there. But I, I think the, um, the police department is, was surprisingly receptive, or I guess not surprised, I didn't have any expectations. They were receptive uh, to do it, which was great. So um, there, Laramie is meeting with Friedman Bell um, just to get connected with all the different educational curriculum resources available. 
So that's cool. And then Debbie shared the names with me. Um, and actually there are, <laughs> um, there are around um, 50. So I think she just made up a number. Um, but nonetheless, it's good. Um, there's a student from um, Amherst High School who's pretty interested and then a whole s slew of um, parents, mostly from the elementary schools. Um, so between that and getting, I, I mean, I'm just gonna be focusing on outreaching to those folks um, and getting a sense of what their interest level is. And then also doing more walk audits with Tracy. I think we're hopeful to add pictures to the um, Fort River and Crocker Farm audits that currently exist. And then um, I'm just gonna write up using the Walk Boston framework an audit for Wildwood School. Uh, and wants to join me, us. There, I guess the school district's really into it. Um, Debbie just emailed me yesterday and said, hey, can I, I'm talking to a reporter about Safe Roots to School. You know, can I give them your name and number? And we're, we're promoting it. We're excited about it. So I, they seem genuinely interested, which is, which is great. Yeah. Well, and if anybody else on the committee wants to do some walk audits or we used to actually have, I mean, this was before I was on the TAC, but we had that complete street subcommittee. So if I remember correctly, I mean, I was actually recruited to one of the subcommittees. That, um, but I think, right, we can actually have, so Christine, I think community members be on the subcommittee and they don't have to be officially appointed by anybody. Is that correct, Guilford? So, so oh, wait, I mean, one, one possibility, Christine, is if we have, if there's who are interested or, I know when they did the walk audits before they recruited people from those neighborhoods. You know, yeah, that I mean, would be I'm, some I'm added happy perspective. To, with, the, with the list I have, I'm just happy to say, hey, come into Crocker Farm. You want to walk around with me, take some pictures. I can share the walk audit that was done previously. Um, you know, similarly, that I can do that at Fort River as well. So I'm happy to just reach out to the list that Debbie's generated. Sure. And also the, um, the original walk audits, they have the list of the participants, which when I've looked at them, I know quite a few of them. I mean, some of them were parents at the time, you know, but they also live in those neighborhoods. And I think that if we got back in touch with those people too, that okay. some of them might be interested in participating in like the additional round of it. So do you remember if they're contacting whatever? I'll, I mean, I'll it just says, it just says their it. names on the notes. Um, but I have a lot of their email addresses just because I okay. know who they are. Yeah. So is this like an actual subcommittee now or it doesn't even matter? Just I should just reach out, get people to do this thing with me. And I don't know. I fall. mean, Guilford, do you feel like we would need an official subcommittee? I would say it's just a group of people working with you is the easiest way to do this. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Good. If you have, may I just say something? If you have an official subcommittee, you have to keep minutes and oh, I was gonna, meetings. I was, yes, I was worried. And that. then, so we can do these walk audits without like convening officially. That's what that's what you're saying, right, Chris? If we just have it in yeah. group of I interest. Mean, it's good to know that the subcommittee framework exists if we need to be doing anything official. But I mean, at this point, I think we're all just trying to educate ourselves about, right. um, you know, kind of previous um, kind of issues or concerns or whatever state of things now. I, and I mean, I, I know that Debbie and company want to see these walk audits, you know, I don't, I don't think that we're making any big decisions or <laughs> No, I mean, so one of the things just to keep in mind is that um, the school year ends on June 17th. And I think that, you know, for some of the schools, I know at least like the middle and the high school, they start to wrap stuff up sooner, right? Like I think like seniors don't go to class after the first week of June <laughs> okay. or so. Um, so, I mean, I think if we are going to do if we are going to do walk audits, particularly if we wanted to do for consideration and then share that information, um, we'd have to just do them soon. 
in the next few weeks and stuff and then get that information to the elementary school building committee. And they could come back to the TAC if the TAC you know, wanted to review it or take a position or something on it. It hasn't been referred to us by the council, but it might be informative. So. Well, uh, our, we're just, we're able to look at it and give feedback. I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not thinking of these audits as existing for any, you know, we're not sort of asking for any official body in at the municipal level to take a position one way or the other at this point. Oh, sure. Right. It's just mostly, it's for, just informative. Yeah. yeah. Feedback. And I think the school district just wants to see them. Well, that's good. Um, I mean, because one of the things I had heard when I listened in on one of the recent elementary school building committee discussions, and they mentioned that there had been some comments about the walkability or bikeability of some of the sites, particularly at Fort River, just at the intersections there, like the intersection of what is that Southeast Street, Northeast and Main, is that right? No, Route 9. And also again at Main too. Yeah, that it's a pretty congested intersection. And they mentioned that they had done some traffic studies. I know that the UMass students were involved with doing some of the traffic counts at all these different points. Um, but they hadn't really been focused too much on bikes and walking. They were thinking more about vehicle traffic. Um, and they said, the consultant mentioned something about how they'd consider more about bikes and walking later. Um, but one thing that's interesting about the Safe Reads to School program is that once you are more active in the program, you are eligible for school districts are eligible for safe routes to school infrastructure funding, which can be up to $1.5 million. And it can include improvements within two miles of a school. Um, because under state law, two miles is the distance that students can be asked to walk from their school if it's K through sixth grade. So it is a potential source. I mean, one thing I heard consistently at that meeting is that any of the issues with the congestion that they're not on site of the schools, so they wouldn't be any improvements to make the intersections more walkable or to improve traffic, traffic congestion or whatever, that none of that would be covered by MS. Um, but you could potentially use safe routes to school funds for that. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I think, um, I mean, personally, I'm interested in bringing up bikeability and walkability in the new elementary school debate moving forward. But I don't really see that as a big part of what I'm doing with the district right now. I think we just want to kind of be looking at what the state of things are now. Um, you know, the environment of safety and comfort that exists currently that's either deterring. I mean, I do think a lot of people are opting out of their kid biking and, um, and walking. And, um, and I think the district also thinks that that's true too. So we're just trying to get a handle on what that's about and just looking at what currently exists. I'm not Hi. sure that the district at this point is thinking, oh, we're definitely going to I mean, it'll be great if, you know, we get a good active program running in the schools um, for next year that's around pedestrian and bikes. Right. Andy, did you have Andy a comment? Andy had his hand up, yeah. 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 Um, has there been any discussion with the school building committee about walkability as an issue as they're getting close to having to make a decision as to whether to build at uh, the Wildwood or Fort River site would be the only reason to not delay because I think by your next meeting they will have made a decision and if you want to talk to them about walkability as an issue that the school building committee should consider uh, you might want to do that sooner rather than later. No I think that 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 was one thing. Yes, for sure. I don't think that it's been a major factor. And I haven't participated in the elementary school building committee meetings. I just went to the recent one because they had the transportation discussion about the traffic study. It doesn't seem like that's been a major component of it, though I know that some parents have been thinking about it a lot and some have reached out to me on that. Um, but I agree that, I mean, my understanding is that the 
elementary school building committee is supposed to make a recommendation on which site to choose like within the next month or so. so. But it seems like he was he was suggesting that we, you know, if we have any information on that, it seems like it's relevant or if Christine or, you know, um, yeah, I mean, what, so the walk audits, we could certainly submit those, right? So I think Tracy mentioned with the, the Fort River walk audit has been done. And my intention would be to go back with a couple Fort River parents and, you know, update, I don't know, make a different conclusion, take some pictures. Um, but that certainly could I could try to make that happen ASAP so that we can get it to the mm -hmm. committee. Um, and similarly do, the, I mean, we have to write one up for the Wildwood site. So I think we could, I guess we could submit those. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of activity would need to be mounted in order to make it like an issue of concern or a factor that gets weighted in any way, shape or form in terms of whether or not the, um, the site is appropriate. I think that it is in there. If, if you look at the materials from the meetings, like they do have a decision matrix, you know, and okay. I think there are some, there is something in the decision matrix from the meetings and they've talked about different versions of it. So I don't know if they've picked a final version yet, but there is something in there just about traffic safety and things like that. So. Okay, so it would be submitted under the kind of title of traffic safety if we were to get these audits. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, Christine, like you and I, we had talked about trying to, you know, draft something pretty quickly, just recognizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I just, so. I hadn't, I just thinking about my own purposes in terms of prepping for next year and working with the. Oh, no, definitely. Group. Yeah. But yeah, but sure, I can. What you might do is talk to Kathy Shane, who's the chair of the committee, and uh, do that fairly quickly. I know they're meeting tomorrow morning, and it's too late to get yeah. to anything to, for tomorrow morning's meeting, but ask whether it's a factor, whether there's anything you can do to be helpful to the extent that they want to consider it. Uh, because once they, make, once they submit a decision, I think that it freezes it up, so. Yeah. Do you want to do that, Tracy? Um, I, you mean reach out to Kathy Shane? Yeah. And yeah. Just, you know, is there still anything that we can do to move the needle and, you know. Oh, sure. I mean, helpful? I can reach out to her. I can reach out to her. Um, okay. I know, I mean, it sounded like you had chatted with her a little bit on the project. I haven't. I did, I yeah. haven't reached out to her. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't, again, I didn't do it in a way that, um, where I was necessarily trying to truly inject relevant local information, mm, if sure. that makes sense. I'm I can, I'll reach out to her. I'm not sure I'm going to reach her before tomorrow morning, but I will. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That sounds good. You guys have done a lot of work on this, so that is really appreciated. Thank it's you. Christine. She's like, she she's on it. Yeah. We did a lot of outreach. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So thank you. Um, no, honestly, I just want to say it really has not been a challenge. I mean, I, the district is really, really, truly interested in sort of standing up and doing a set of things, and so are the cops. But I, so, but I think we needed someone to like, you know, be the point person, which is what yeah, I mean now. yeah, happy to do it. Yeah. And that, um, you know, because we've been talking about this for a while. And so you've gotten involved and you realize that these people are interested. So I think, you know, it sounds like real progress is being made. Well, and I think too, that Lucy Freeman Bell, I mean, she met with us last summer, right. And she's been interested for a while. She'd come on board as a new rep for Western Mass. And it, I know she had reached out to the district a number of times. And I mean, the district just has a lot of other priorities with COVID and budgets and wow. everything. And so um, I think Christine was really the glue to like help this go. <laughs> so, and it's great that the district is receptive and that the district leadership's receptive. Well, and because we need them to be part of this too. So you just need, thank you for being the nucleus around mm. which we all may spin. Um, Sure. So um, thank you. And um, 
our next item of in, uh, uh, on our agenda are some updates from the council and um, TSO. Um, the first item is the North Pleasant Street parking and the TSO public hearing. <laughs> Who is, are you talking about that, Tracy? I can talk about it briefly. So um, both uh, myself and Kim went to the hearing and Guilford was speaking at the hearing. I mean, it seemed like a lot of the, I think I did send around the memo earlier that was under consideration by TSO and the plans. Um, but it seemed like a lot of the focus of the hearing was on how many parking spaces to have be permit parking and how many parking spaces to be metered parking. Um, and that's really where they spent a lot of the discussion. Um, there was, and so they did, the TSO did take a vote on it and they did change from the town's the initial recommendation where they made more of the spaces metered and fewer of the spaces permit. Um, and then, and that, and so long-term, right, the idea was that, and the council had already approved this, like based on tax recommendations, and on the park side back in angled parking mm -hmm. and that is still going forward um one of the things right is that some of the angled parking won't be introduced until the street is wide and then the whole project is done so the, the second part of the meeting was also to discuss like what could be done sooner um and so i think it sounded like with dpw's work schedule if i'm remembering correctly and guilford can make any corrections is that they thought that some minor improvements might be able to be made um, like by the fall, which could include making the street one way and then also um, switching the parking from the west side of the street to the east side of the street. Now I did hear from um, after the hearing, I did hear from Rob Custer. I know he also reached out to other people, including Dorothy Pam, the chair of the TSO, about his concerns that bikes that southbound bike traffic be considered as well, even if there's just going to be temporary improvements that aren't the long term. And we haven't discussed it as a committee yet, if, and um, it hasn't really come before us. But my thinking was just that, and I know they've done this both in Europe and in Cambridge and Somerville and things, is that um, there are quite a few streets where you have the motor vehicle traffic is one way and you allow bike traffic to be two ways. You don't actually have to have a painted bike lane, a counterflow bike lane for that. It's just the idea is that there's just a much lower level of traffic and that bikes can go like where they feel safe. We, we did discuss having the traffic, uh, bicycle traffic on that road when we were discussing yeah we did of course but the yeah. thing is like so i mean in terms of like implementing the whole plan like with the painted bike lane going southbound and things i feel like and guilford would know better than i but it seems like you're not necessarily able to make all of those changes immediately but as a temporary thing you could you could just say you could maybe perhaps have a sign that says you know, that it's like prohibited for motor vehicles, bikes only or something. And bikes could bike where they bike, want to bike going southbound, not on the sidewalk. Um, I mean, I'll, already without the student, like, I mean, I know, right, the UMass graduation was a week ago on Sunday or no, Friday and then and Saturday. And I mean, you can see now it's like campus, it's so much emptier. There's so like even in that area, there's so much less parking on street and things. When you say that you would prohibit vehicular traffic, would it be access only? No, um, not prohibit like prohibit southbound traffic. I'm sorry. Make it just right, one way. We're, right. So it's one way for motor vehicle traffic, and it's two way for the bike. I thought traffic. we were making it northbound, one way. Yeah, I'm saying prohibit southbound, make okay. it northbound. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying in the absence of having like having to do a whole painted bike lane and have the width and like do all the full improvements and things that even so we just... don't feel that there could be because I mean if if you don't provide some form of restriction on where those southbound bikes could go, they could put, you know, just ride down the middle of the road legally 
Correct. I mean, it depends how much of a through street it still is once it becomes a one-way street, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's certainly be access, right? So, I don't know, Guilford, what do you think? I just, I know Rob just was very concerned about that aspect, so. And um, we haven't really got to it yet. So we'll, we'll just work on it and go from there. Thanks. All right. So I know too, um, I listened to part of the council meeting, but it was on their agenda to approve the TSO recommendations, but some of the public hearings went really long at the council meeting and that got pushed to the next council meeting. So TSO didn't actually vote on it yet. And then, um, so Kim just moving on right to that next item, the TAC presenting at TSO. So, um, we were put on the TSO agenda for tonight, but the agenda is already packed with things like the senior center, the community participation officers, and some other items that have gotten pushed from other agendas. Um, um, Kim and I did meet after our last meeting to talk about, you know, that we'd like to summarize the memo, maybe do a quick presentation. It just didn't seem like it was going to fit into their agenda, and she and I are both busy this week. So we did ask if we could present in June, and we haven't heard back yet. Right, is that right? Yep. And TSO is meeting tonight. I think Andy, are you still here? I think your meeting is what at six thirty. Yes, the um, the meeting is at six thirty. So of course I'm going to have to leave in a little bit. Um, the uh, uh, let me see if I can get it. It is on the agenda for tonight's meeting, but I don't think that it's anticipated that we'll actually get to it and I will make sure to just report on what happened if need be uh, so I can take care of communicating back your unavailability and your request for June. And you are correct that there is a lot else on the agenda. As far as the last meeting was concerned, there were some, uh, there, were, there was a recommendation out of TSO. It did not deal with the uh, bike lane issue. It dealt with, um, these parking places and assignment of some of the parking issues, I think was, um, but within existing construction, no new construction to go with that. And uh, it was postponed because of uh, just the length that the agenda went on about other things. And quite frankly, we went, we met until 1230 in the morning. Oh my goodness. I was not there then. <laughs> Thank you, but that's too long. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. It, uh, part of it was the last part of it was uh, can't talk about it because it was an executive session. Oh, I see. But, okay. Um, the executive session did go till twelve thirty. Oh did your executive session actually start on Monday or did it start on Tuesday morning? <laughs> uh, I believe it started on Monday and ended on Tuesday. Oh, I see. Okay. That's crazy. All right. Thanks, Andy. Um, I mean, one thing I um, I had seen something from the TSO chair that one thing on the agenda for the TSO meeting is about this resolution or consideration of having these speed limits, like the speed limits change throughout town. It is on the agenda. I don't, haven't talked to anyone about it. The agenda included uh, that issue speed limits request to adopt Massachusetts General Law Chapter 90, 17C and 18B, which is about, I think the speed limit issue. It's probably just at most a presentation. As I said, the, uh, your committee's uh, discussion about the role of the committee and committee charge is also on the agenda, but given the fact that yeah. we're, uh, also talking about the community participation officers and the uh, senior um, center, uh, you know, it's a fairly um, loaded, so I don't think that I, I can just report. Well. Right, no, they told me that um, they had gotten a letter, like on the speed limit issue, there was a letter from the town attorney regarding it. And um, so I guess, you know, we'll see if it gets referred to TAC or not. Um, thank you. And so, um, let's see what else. Christine Breastrup had her hand up. Yeah, I'm sorry, Chris. Oh, I think I had my question answered. I was wondering what 5B was about, TAC presenting at TSO meeting. So 
I'm understanding that that's the TAC presenting your charge and what it is you do to the TSO. Is that correct? Um, it was well. So I mean, as a town, we're we're a committee under the town manager, right? So it's also it's actually up to the town manager to decide on our charge. I know when Aaron Hayden was the chair back in 2020, the TAC members worked with him, and we we were trying to update our charge because our charge still refers to us like under the select board and so on. And at that time he did send, Aaron sent a draft charge to the town manager. Um, but we haven't heard any updates since 2020 when that was done. Um, I think that the other thing was that we had just when we started the new council, um, a few times the TAC had put together just a short memo just because sometimes there's confusion about the TAC and what the TAC is and what's our role and so on. And so we had put together that three page memo um, just about what we are and what, what we see our advisory role as and ways in which we've contributed to projects. I remember you provided some input then just about maybe mentioning things like the Route 9 project that's currently underway and the you know, crosswalk, some downtown projects that we've had input in and things like that. And so we did, we did send that memo to the town manager and the council president at that time. Um, but so I had seen, I had seen this item going to TSO is just to present, you know, to present that a little bit and to answer any TSO or council questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. So, so, um, uh, the, our next agenda item are any updates on um, some projects around campus, around campus, around the, uh, a town, including the Amity Street sidewalk improvements yeah. Is that Guilford. Amity looks great, I think. It's like beautiful, it's wide, and I have to go pick up my kid. Um, if I don't, I, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna call in on my phone, but if I get disconnected, one key item for me was just what we thought about when we wanna meet in June and how many meetings we think we have to have. But I'll try to stay connected. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll be back in five minutes. So um, is is it Guilford who's showing the um, Amity Street improvements? Are, are you talking about that? Um, if you want to, I mean, we're just, we have a sidewalk contract out right now. Um, Amity Street was the first one on it. Um, they're pretty much done with it. They're just wrapping up. After they finish on Amity Street, they're, they're going to stop the sidewalk work and they're actually going down to Mill Lane to finish the um, Mill Lane multi-use path, which goes from East Hadley Road and from the boulders and those apartments, which have new names now, um, all the way to Groff Park. So they'll start that project. Wow, that's great. Wait, so they're going on the whatever that tiny street is that that becomes gravel or yes not paved okay oh. I, I saw those markings so that's awesome so that is the street getting done and the sidewalk it looks like the sidewalk's getting extended or this on this project only the sidewalk's being done it's going to be a multi-use path through there um and then after they're done with that project they're going to kellogg street to do the sidewalks on kellogg street and then we're gonna repave Kellogg Street as well. And then they're gonna get back on sidewalks, which they have about four or five more sidewalks, mostly in the downtown area, around the high school and downtown that they'll do. And that's, hopefully they'll finish that all up before the end of the season. So the down, uh, just a question, the downtown, uh, the, the sidewalks by the high school, are those the, the ones on, is it whatever, tri is it Triangle Street that goes, through chestnut chestnut oh. no oh. we're doing uh gray gray taylor oh. and gray to start with oh. yeah wait what are those streets it's it is triangle mattoon is it mattoon street mattoon and triangle are the main roads yes for yeah Guilford, when did, what did you say the Mill Lane project was again? Where is this, where is its starting point? What's its starting point and end point currently? And then where's the extension starting point and end point? So it starts on South Pleasant Street, right by the, inter the intersection there, crosses the intersection, goes across the, the pedestrian bridge, goes by the mill, and then goes up Mill Lane to Croft Park and stops. 
So that's the current. That's what it is currently. Well, it's gonna take all that out and put a new sidewalk all through there. Okay. And so, so then does it get extended at all? Towards the dirt part of Mill Lane? Yeah. No. Okay. It just goes right to Groff, Groff Park. It doesn't extend past past that entrance to Groff Park. No, it does not. But it yeah. connects Groff Park all the way back to okay. the boulders and all the right. apartments. So so you can um, redo the um, pedestrian bridge too? That is getting redone? No. Oh, I thought you said it was, sorry. Well, if we go across it, there, there's a little section a new sidewalk on the other side of the pedestrian bridge, which is gravel now, that'll become okay. paved. And then I see. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Um, we have some questions, include I I I'm sorry, I didn't see who was first. So um I'll start with Marcus. Oh, it wasn't me. Okay. So I'll start with Chris. Oh, this isn't a question. I would just wanted to note that um the work that Guilford's talking about was part of the community development block grant um, that we have uh, been awarded. And um, it's an effort to connect the people who live in the apartment complexes, which Guilford mentioned on East Hadley Road with the new improvements and with all of Graff Park, you know, that was an important connection. So just wanted to mention that community development block grant fund. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think that's a no brainer. I mean, it, it's clearly there are no sidewalks. I mean, connecting those currently. So I mean, there are now on the opposite side of the street, but I think it's really fantastic that um, project. So I see the utility. It's very apparent to me, at least. So thank you. Um, and um, Marcus, did you you didn't? Yeah, I was just wondering if we determine the structural stability of the pedestrian bridge. Are we putting people on a bridge, you know, a wobbly bridge, or how many years has the bridge got left? That that bridge is actually in better shape than the bridge across the street on Mill Lane, which goes across the little brook. So yeah. it's actually, we, we, it's in better shape and it, the inspections are much better than other bridges we have for pedestrians. Well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. I, I run across it with some frequency, so good to know. Um, but I was actually, no, it was a good question, Marcus, because I was kind of thinking the same thing, except I didn't say it. <laughs> Have you guys been to the Mass Mutual Center lately and parked in their parking garage? I don't even know what that is. Well, you probably shouldn't. If you, thought, if you thought that bridge was bad, you shouldn't <laughs> park in that parking garage. Oh. <laughs> They're redoing it, right? I mean, they're re. Are they doing something with a contract on it or something? I don't know. I, I went to yeah. a game, a game there, and I parked in the parking garage, and they have whole sections of the garage roped off that you're not supposed to park on, and there's concrete spalling, and there's netting to catch the concrete. It's it's amazing. I I didn't oh park God. there the second time I went. <laughs> How is that possible? Um. Um. So the next agenda item, unless there's other um, information on that, but thank you for the update, Gelford, um, is a Pomeroy Village intersection. And it says DAC and Mass Commission for the Blind Review. I don't know whose agenda this was. Um, um, well, they re uh, the, the DACC reviewed it and they wanted, Someone else to review it. That's how they went out. Maureen, Maureen Pollitt from planning went out and had the that group you just said on the Mass Commission for Blind. Yeah, right. And basically they said things were fine and just make sure you it's actually very, very simple. They, they didn't say very much. They liked what was going on. They approved. So it, um the Pomeroy um uh so it's going to be a roundabout, right? It the is. Intersection, it doesn't say roundabout, but it means, okay. And so are there going to be, um, I've forgotten, um, were, are there flashing beacons in that for, for, cross, for people who are crossing? Yeah, so there's going to be flashing beacons and they're going to beep, they're going to go chirp, 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 so you can find them. 
Okay. And then when you push the button, it's going to say wait. And then when they start flashing, they're going to say the light's flashing. And then you can okay. cross. Great. And so um, the, the commission for the blind approved that. And so, I mean, that was something we were actively talking about beforehand. And so that's fantastic. That was approved. Is there any other discussion about that? Any questions from the floor? Chris? I just wanted to note that I was part of that conversation and the woman from the Mass um, Commission for the Blind was very complimentary of the design and also that Myra Ross put us in touch with her and Myra is here as an attendee in case she wants to say something. Oh, certainly. Um, I can't see her. Hello, I'll make her a panelist. Yeah. There's someone else here too. Yeah, there's a 413 phone number that has the hand up. Oh, that's uh, Tracy. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we don't want her to, to speak right, so. <laughs> I can't promote her. I can't promote Tracy. I promoted Myra. Yeah, you might not be able to promote Tracy if she doesn't, maybe because she, she doesn't have a name or something. I can allow her to talk, but mm. you know, let Myra go first. Yeah. Well, if Myra has anything to say, hello, Myra, do you have anything to say? You're currently muted. I think you, you can unmute them. Uh, you can ask them to. Yeah. And Tracy is back. Uh, sorry, I was the one who like raised my hand. Yeah. And just so you know, um, yeah, Myra is here, but um, okay. looks like maybe she maybe she doesn't want to talk or oh no. Myra, if you do want to talk, you um so one thing I had just noted because I did go to the disability access advisory committee meeting when they talked about the Pomeroy lane project and also the feedback from the mass so she says commission of the blind thought that that was great and it's really great that the planning and got the feedback one thing that that can the the person from the mass commission of the blind had said is that with any of the um particularly like for wayfinding and things that you should have a lot of the beeping just so that people will know where to find those signals and things, but I was a little, I mean, one thing is just practically speaking, I don't know if there's a way to have like a motion detector in the area or something, but the idea of having it, and also she wanted to make sure that the volumes were loud enough that they could be heard, like even with heavy traffic. But I guess I, the idea of it beeping all night seemed like a little much to me or something. I know a project in Millbury, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and there was a senior center like right at a corner. Where they webinar. Webinar. What's that? Control one. Myra. Oh, you got, are you, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, Myra. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, it was my speech thing. Um, oh. I've been in places and I've heard those things when they chirp at night or when they chirp when nobody uh, is there, it's it's pretty quiet. The, the beep, it's not like a beep, it's like a, it's like a little knock. Um, and you can hear them. I mean, I've heard them in other places. Obviously, there are other kinds of them that I might not be aware sure. of. But um, I don't think the perpetual knocking is a real problem for a neighborhood. It's um, I, I don't think that anybody would hear it except somebody who's walking in maybe 10 or 15 feet away. I don't, I don't know. I just know. I was just saying that just for this one project that I was involved with that. And they they had the. Um, pedestrian crossings that if you hit the button that's when it would chirp but it was still I could see that how if people had their windows open like right next to it all the time or something well it's like um, a gas station and I mean there's not a lot of houses where those are yeah no it's true yeah I know I I just was wondering if maybe it's even worth just looking at like how many like are there apartments above the um, businesses like with the Valley Transporter building and things like that to see. 
you know, the, the uh, I mean, I definitely do want it to be accessible. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. didn't know whether you need to have it like chirp all the time for it to be accessible. Well, the if... purpose of it chirping is so that you can find it. No, so, of course. I just so didn't know. If once there's... you push the button, you've already found it. Absolutely. I didn't know just with the tech, if with technology or something, if it could be combined with some motion detector or something. I, I agree that it's very important to have it be I have accessible. No idea, but I don't think that's loud. Oh. I mean, I, I think that the the ones that I've heard, um, you know, when it's making an announcement, if it's a regular scheduled light, you know, that can be loud, but this will just be activated when someone wants to use it. So it's not, I don't think it should be very obtrusive. It's not like a regular light with a pattern that happens whether anyone's there or not. Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank, yeah, I mean, that's great feedback. It was just, that was just sort of one of my impressions. So I, I didn't know the details of it. Um, but Christine, did you have a recipe? Did you have a comment? I just wanted to say one more thing. I was really pleased that um, Guilford and his team were able to put that crosswalk in north of the roundabout. And that's going to have those RRFBs that either and as well, because that was something that people really wanted, people who cross over from the office park to, you know, potentially get food on the east side of the street. So I just wanted to say that was really great that they were able to accommodate that. And that was something I think, too, that was mentioned at a bunch of the public meetings, right, that people talked about working in those offices or, yeah, no, that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And so, it's, it's something that would not really have come out in the absence of the public meetings, you know? So it really shows the utility of the public meetings, you know? It's one thing to like examine a space and figure, you know, see what's apparent to us, you know? But it's another thing to hear from people who are using that space on a daily basis, so. Definitely. Um, and um, Guilford, what is the time frame for that project? Um, hopefully the construction documents will be ready and will bid before the end of June. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, that's great. Well, we, yeah. <laughs> well, so it does, like when you're doing, because it's a roundabout and things like, I think from the public meetings, they talked about how you'd have to reroute some traffic or would you have to reroute traffic like away from that intersection? For construction? Yeah, I was just wondering, just in terms of like before UMass comes back and things, like what? <laughs> well, I mean, the contractor is getting pretty good at building these things now. I mean, they built the one at nine and ninety-one uh, in Damon Road, and yeah, they uh, Altazar just whipped that one out. Great. Oh, so are they going to be the same? Are they going to be the contractor? Is it known, or does it have to be bid? It has to be bad. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. Is there any other, if there's no other discussion, um, the next agenda item is talking about our upcoming meeting dates um, and possible agendas for June. Did you want to take that, Tracy? Sure. I mean, so we typically meet on um, in the third Thursdays of the month, which is the second and the sixth. That is also the same night, just like tonight. Of there's a TSO meeting as well. So if Kim and I are presenting at one of those, um, we would want to keep the meeting short. I don't know if I mean. I don't feel like right now. I mean, we have a lot on our plate as a committee. I mean, there's things like Christine and I are working on San Francisco, and we can report back on that. Um, we haven't been asked for input on too much yet. Yeah. I mean, do people feel like we're gonna need two meetings or could we maybe have one meeting? Or... Seems like we could have one. Yeah, what do people think? I agree. Have a summer schedule. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> are, we, um, are we able to keep meeting online or is there some kind of stop to that? I think, I think we're allowed to meet through July at least. Is that right? Yes. And does it seem, I mean, work for the town, no, do, or does it seem likely that the legislature would extend it again or no, not very likely? <laughs> Chris, what do you think? 
They might because they just extended the ability to do um, outdoor dining and outdoor service of alcohol through the beginning of April of next year. So wow. I think they are thinking about this and you know they might extend it. I mean, it is, they are very accessible. I mean, I do love seeing people's smiling faces, and, but we also can see you on Zoom and yeah, it's easier. <laughs> so um, yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, so the question is, the, well, I get, yeah, go maybe ahead. Not the second then how, I mean, um, maybe the June, is it this, would it be this? Do we want to meet on the ninth? If we meet on the ninth, if people are available then, then um, we'd be able to like report back on some TSO stuff and we'd have more to share. Okay. But we could also just go, I mean, the, the 16th would be our yeah. one. Yeah, we could do that too. So why don't we do the do the 16th i'm suggesting yes yeah no no um kim i know that we had changed our meetings from what was it like 5 to five thirty, based on your schedule because you were teaching do yes. we want to go back to five or yeah i mean it's up to other people i kind of like this but you know it's easier yeah is it easier to keep it at five yeah because uh, then i can pick 30. up my kids yeah uh, five makes it tough so yeah okay so all right Thursday so, the 16th at five. Yep. At Thursday the 16th at five. Okay. Or five thirty. We just said we're gonna keep it at five thirty. Mm -hmm. Great. And Guilford, does that work with you? Here. Yes. Let's say yeah. Okay. The sixteenth. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also there's so many other meetings right now going on in town, like I know, you know budget and all those things. So it just right. it has yeah. We're meeting. That's what we do in Amherst. Yeah, great. Well, hopefully we're meeting a little less than sometimes. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> Ask Chris that question too. Planning, planning has too much to do. <laughs> there's a lot so, of meetings. There's a lot of meetings and a lot of committees. All right. Um, so, if, so then we've decided on Thursday next. I mean, <laughs> next meeting is Thursday, the sixteenth. Yep. 30 and um, are great. there any announcements or other committee comments? Um, had I knew I, I, I guess I left in my car when I was going, but um, one comment I had is so Mindy Dom reached out to me today about um, Western Mass Rail and the efforts to get rail, um, passenger rail in Western Mass. And she's been in contact with somebody and she wanted to connect them with us and things if that's i mean we could have that person come and present to our committee mm -hmm. on the 16th yes please yeah, yeah. okay yeah. yeah i'd be interested to available. see what if they have if their plans include you know the old amtrak station okay didn't Let's i just that. hear that i mean the governor had committed to it right yeah so. well but he's committed to getting it out either. of springfield right i mean making there an east-west corridor but not not coming up through amherst right so that's a different yeah i don't see thing. amherst i mean this so what i understand is one reason right the tracks the amtrak was switched to the west side of the river, like to go through. Why? One reason the Amherst Amher station closed and we switched to Northampton is just because the tracks on the east side of the river are in such bad shape. Well, I mean like that's why they south moved of to Brattleboro. The that like the train, what is it running? I don't know. Maybe Bernie's been on the train, but the people I know who were on it last yeah. said it's running like you know fifteen miles an hour, twenty miles an hour. Yeah, no, that's it's not in good yeah. shape at all. No, the west, the west side was why it moved to the east side but the east side they used to have to like do some weird stuff in palmer so they tried to move it move it over to the west side i mean that's where it always tried to be right so they were just amherst was just a uh, a band-aid yeah my, my introduction to the uh to, to the rail when i first moved up here was it came through and set my neighborhood on fire <laughs> uh, when I was looking at the picture down. So uh, I, I would not hold out hope that Amherst will be. Um, yeah, I would yeah, say. Yeah, no, because they, but they did talk about having like the knowledge corridor, right? Because that, that line, I think, goes down to New London. Mm -hmm. Well, the 91, um, it goes to New Haven and it connects right, right, with the but, one that goes along the Connecticut. I mean, along. Right, the, that's the one. Yes. Yeah. But there was also talk of re revi 
bringing the one in Amherst back because it would go down to New London mm. and then it could stop at various places along there. So, But you know what's interesting is that the Northampton station, it's actually like one of the highest used stations. Oh, really? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it pulls in a lot of students and people. And so they've had a lot. And that, right, there's also now a station in Holyoke and there's the one in Greenfield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so... Well, so it sounds like we yes, we would like that person to come to that. I will, and I will follow up. I hadn't, um, Mindy Dom. She, and I will um, follow up with her. Great, great. Okay. And um, I don't know. I feel like there's something else. Um, no, we can't think of. So one thing is, and and Guilford, um, so I wasn't touch with um, uh who's the GIS IT person for the town, just about the um, the bike and the bike and pedestrian network mapping and things. So he had reached out to me. Um, so you reached out to him? He, re he asked me, I think when you forwarded that student stuff, he contacted me because okay. I knew him previously because I'd worked with him in the district advisory board. So he's like, hey, Guilford sent me stuff. <laughs> So, you know, about that, Um, because we had talked about having an intern, but then he he thought he might be able to do some of the data layers himself or something. Um, um, I'll, I'll reach back out to him. Yeah. Guilford is just, um, you know, so we had reviewed and like made all the markups. And I don't know. And Kim, I remember Kim was taking notes for some of them, too. That in my files, I find like the results of all of our have a comprehensive list of what they all were. I think we had reviewed it at three or four meetings. Yeah, we did. We did. And Kim, I mean, maybe you still have notes too or something. I don't remember. I think, I think Guilford had kind of the master list. Okay. There's Is a bunch right? of notes. Yeah. Okay. But I'm happy uh, to give, I, I have notes on the actual map so i'm happy to give those to I'm sorry. Oh, sure. you just tracy describe what it is that you're talking about oh so i'm sorry i'm sorry so yeah so christine wasn't on the committee then so so what it was is that we have this um bicycle and pedestrian network plan that was developed with the pioneer valley planning commission i believe it was finished in 2018 or 2019 and it had a lot of strategies for improving walkability and bikeability in Amherst. One key element of the plan, in my mind, is that there, there, it does include some maps related to what are the primary pedestrian corridors and primary bike corridors, both in terms of existing, in terms of what is seen as the most important areas, and once you have that map right, then you can prioritize future improvements along those corridors. Um, and so one of the things is that we had spent, so in the original plan, there was a map, um, but there were some issues with the, the map layer, including the road layer that they used for the map. So in 2000, last like winter and spring like in 2000 like february 2021 march i remember it was like three or four meetings we spent time going over the map in detail from north to south looking at that initial map that the pioneer valley planning commission had created and making updates and changes to it <clears throat> um, including to do some clarifications and so after that time in order for so it's been a goal that map could be finished in the updates and then we could that map could then be perhaps along with the plan perhaps adopted by the council or something endorsed by the council as like this is where we want our priorities to be and use for future decision making um and it just seems like it's a very helpful visual to have that map finished so there had been some discussion about maybe there was an intern for dpw or somebody who could maybe do that but that hadn't worked out yet and so, um, so I had just been um, T coordinator for the town. Mike Warner had reached out to me um, because on this intern idea, because there was one GAS student who said they were 
could maybe be an intern or something, but even if that fell through and it's, I'm not sure that that would work out, but just the idea of this layer, it's like getting that layer done and ready for like to move forward with the public. I mean, we spent a lot of time on that map and so we got through it. So. <laughs> so that was the thing is when I was talking to Mike Warren, but then I just couldn't like put my hands on all of them very easily. So um, that's where I wanted, I hadn't reached out to Guilford yet to see if Guilford had the markups, but, but it yeah. seemed just talking to Mike, he thought that it might not be maybe just being as good as he is or something. He thought that it might not be that much work for him to maybe make the markups himself. I don't know. Well, I guess just to circle back to the safe routes to school um, question, Andy brought up of what kind of information can we be supplying to the school building committee? To me, that seems like really good information um, oh, definitely, for them yeah. to be, again, we don't know where walkability and bikeability figures into the decision matrix, but if we have, you know, maps that show existing corridors and future priorities for what we think makes sense for corridors that's important information for definitely and we did in our discussions we like in certain neighborhoods near schools like we intentionally identified certain streets as corridors just knowing that students would need to connect from the school to the neighborhoods you know that they're coming from and so on right so i think like we included like high street and some of those streets that would be connector streets so but so now we're waiting for Mike to do it or we're waiting for, for well, it sounds like um, Guilford said he would reach out to him. So, okay. And Guilford, I might just, um, I might just send an email just to connect, like to connect on that because I'm going to look through and see what I have, but I just didn't think I had that much too. Well, the problem is Mike has a lot he's doing. He does. Oh no, for sure. Absolutely. And my problem is I have, I've used up all my intern spaces already for this uh, summer. Yeah, no, I understand. I think Mike was going to um, reach out to the student who'd applied to be an intern. There so was then a the specific problem is is manpower, right? Who no, who has the expertise? The specific pa uh, problem is two. Um, someone to do it, yes, but we have money to pay someone to do it, but I have no place to stick someone to do it. So I'm, that's my shortage. So if I had another room, I could bring someone into our building, but we filled all our intern spaces for the season. Didn't but I have money for interns. Can we get a tent? Can, do they have to be next to you, Guilford? I mean. Well, we need to give them access to a town computer with the access to the GIS. So that's why I was hoping Mike had a spot downstairs in the basement that would work. Yeah, it sounded like it could be complicated to hire somebody, but Mike was looking into it, right? Like, I think even with interns, I said they, it had to go through HR and it had to be like advertised and stuff like that. No, I already advertised. Uh, oh. We just need to oh. I'll have a talk with Mike. Right. Anyway. So Guilford has money. Mike has space. <laughs> the thing has already been advertised. So we really need the person. Is that right, Guilford? Well, if we want to finish up, it'd be nice to have someone to have time to work on it and finish it up. Right. Well, thank you. We'll, we'll see if we can make some progress. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I think yeah. that's it. Oh, and next week, this is exciting. Next week, my work is hosting this conference. It's in Worcester. Um, thousand attendees, 35 sessions. I'm the session coordinator for them. And um, the governor's coming and Ben Breger is presenting. He's on one of the panels about quick build projects. And um, yeah, it's gonna be exciting. That would be good to see Ben. Ben is on this panel. I'm a little surprised that they said they needed to have at least like six or seven presenters. I mean, the sessions are not that long. I suggested they have a few, a few less people so that everybody could talk a little longer, but um, they insisted. They said, oh, but we want people showcasing like the five different towns and stuff, so yes. And usually all of these recordings, they always go online after. So 
So one of the things I remember from, so Mass DOT, they do these conferences. They do one in the fall. It's called Moving Together. It's usually hosted in downtown Boston. It's a one-day conference, but our last Moving Together was online. Um, but they did have a session there about this whole idea about the bike counterflow against like with the vehicle traffic, similar to what we're talking about with North Pleasant Street. I thought that was a good presentation. I could share that link with people. And then, um, and then they have a two-day conference in Worcester. So too bad that COVID is surging right now, but other than that, all good. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I guess the last item was uh, um, any uh, an unanticipated, right? Did we just discuss that part? Any, I don't know, no. Okay, um, so the last, uh, so we just can be done, I guess, so. Yeah, oh, there was, oh, one quick thing was um, parklets. Right, Chris, do you know anything about the parklets? Yes, we got, um, I think, $83,000 to um, develop some parklets in downtown. And um, we worked with the bid, and they hired a contractor to do two parklets. And it's unclear whether we can actually make a third happen. But um, there's one, um, is it in front of uh, Fresh Side or Oriental? Yeah. It's, already, it's already there, right? It's already yeah. like agreed yeah, and, it and everything. Really good, it looks yeah. really nice. Yeah, I like it. There's yeah, except for they don't seem to have any drains to let water out of the parklet. It just seems like those two by fours and nothing rains will just collect in there. There's no spacing in between. No, not, not on the, it's got straight to, it's straight to tarmac. Yeah. Um, mm. Let's so, take a look. So and there's another one that's going in by Amherst Coffee. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. But they do look really inviting. They do look very nice. Yeah, it was just I saw that you know they had the the gaps in the in the on the walkable surface, but nothing to let the water out. But then um, doesn't it just run under the little skirt? I, there's no, there's no. Yeah. yeah. So. So sorry, are those those are just public seating? Because it looked like there were chairs. That, maybe I didn't see chairs. Maybe I just saw decking. You're associated with a particular restaurant because okay. um, the bid reached out to all the restaurants in town and asked okay. if we'd like to have one of these. I see. And I think there were three restaurants that said yes, we would like this, and so um, we were working on two of them. The bid and is it, two of them. And it sounded and like Veracruzana too, maybe. We're hoping for Vera, Veracruzana, but there seems to be a complication. I think there's a fire hydrant there that may oh, okay. cause a complication, and it might be possible to have two smaller ones, but we haven't quite figured that out yet. Cool. So, Great. yeah. Awesome. Love it. Now, now are, the, um, are the barricades that are still up, Gilford, maybe, you know, on um, North Pleasant Street, um, like near Subway and stuff, are those all going to stay in the summer? Or are they... They were there to protect the parking. Um, uh, okay. So they'll stay until the parking is removed and there's going to be a talk about that hopefully soon. Um, you know, the bigger issue is, is we need to do a lot of paving work and some improvements just the roadway downtown, but everybody now wants to have a different downtown. So we really need to be talking about what we want for our different downtown before the DPW spends a lot of money. We don't really have a lot of to pave what's there. And then people say we want something different and change it, which yeah. is how we normally operate, but it'd be nice to do it the opposite for once. <laughs> so Sorry. I, I guess one, one question, yeah. No, one question with downtown is so, right? Like previously, I guess there aren't too many parking spaces that are still set aside as like, the downtown like outdoor dining right is that right are they almost all gone now like they were closed over the winter and they didn't reopen is that right i'm just trying to visualize it a little bit i feel like Chris there's still the some answer. table i feel like there's still some tables out there but chris um yeah i think there are tables on private property and there are tables on sidewalks but i don't think there are any okay. tables in the street anymore but I wanted to say that um, the planning department is applying for a grant. Um, it's called community planning and it's part of the one-stop grant program. And the hope is that we can get some um, help with doing what Guilford is just talking about, which is designing 
spaces, you know, sidewalks and bump outs and different things like that to make the downtown more pedestrian friendly, more outdoor dining friendly, and um, just make it a more pleasant place to be. So um, I think those, the grant application is due maybe June 3rd. And um, so we're hoping for that. Oh, cool. And we're also, um, we also have money that we got last year we have about $100,000 to help us with um, design guidelines and design standards and streetscape standards for downtown. So we're gonna be working on that. And we have an RFP that's almost ready to go out for that project. Great. Um, if there's no further discussion, we're getting to the end of our meeting time. Um, I, I, um, I make a motion that we are finish our I meeting. Second. Thank you. So have a good night, everyone. Night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. See you on the 16th.